but I'm going to have you guys help me with it so that we can see how to figure out like which, you know, which situation we're dealing with and, um, and, uh, you know, how do we determine if it's normal CDF? How do we determine if it's inverse norm? How do we determine which distribution? We got a few things to think about. Okay, so let's first read the situation that we're initially given, and then we'll take it from there. So, oh, I like 5Ks. The average time to run the 5K, you guys can all see my screen, right? We're cool with that. We're good with that, right? Before I do anything and you can't see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Hold on, let me see some chats going on. Let me make sure. Okay, good. Okay, so <clears throat> the average time to run a 5K um, is 24 minutes and the standard deviation is 2.2. Notice that this is saying, I'm going to convert this into notation. This is average time in general, period, right? Average time and standard deviation. So I'm going to put that maybe up here. Average is 24. That's a four. And the standard deviation is 2.2. Okay, so this is the first thing I'm pulling out. I might need this later, right? Average 24, standard deviation is 2.2. And this represents time running a 5K. Average time is 24 minutes. Yo, I'm pushing to get to break 25. <laughs> Dang, yo, where is, okay, sorry. <laughs> 15 runners are randomly selected to run the 5K fun run. That's not a fun run, these people are fast, okay. This is the sample size of 15. So I'm selecting something now, okay? Now, I could be talking about one person, I could be talking about the sample now. Round all four, blah, and assume a normal distribution. Well, that's kind of funny, because I think that takes care of this. The fact that I have to assume normal distribution. And the reason that I have to assume normal distribution they don't tell me the population is normally distributed, right? They don't say the average time is normally distributed with the mean. They don't say that. And um, the sample size is not greater than or equal to 30, right? My sample size is 15. So I have to assume normal distribution, okay? Um, based on the central limit. So I actually answered that right away. <laughs> they told me that here. I assume a normal distribution. So I was like, oh, cool. Answer that. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Now, first one, they're going to ask me, what is the distribution of X? What is the distribution of that? What is the distribution of this? So um, <clears throat> for my first question, what is the distribution of X? Let's go back to my distribution through my notes, right? These are like my formulas. Which one do I need to look at? Pink, green, or I guess this is like a teal. Pink, lime, green, or teal. Which one am I talking about initially? Or pink. The pink one. I'm talking about the pink one because, you know, I'm just talking about X. They gave me the notation, right? So it's just normally distributed. It's just whatever the heck was given to me in the problem. So cool, that's easy. The mean is 24. The standard deviation is 2.2. Done, that one's done. What is the distribution of X bar? Okay, go back to my distributions. Which one am I talking about? Pink, lime, green, or teal? Green. Lime green. Distribution of the means. All right, let me get my lime green going. And notice, right, that the mean is gonna stay the same as what they gave me, but now I have to change the second part using my formula, right? Follow the formula. So. I need to calculate that first, right? But the mean is gonna say 24. The standard deviation I have to do, which I'll point that I'm gonna do on the side. Standard deviation divided by the square root of n, because that's what it tells me to do here. 0.56 is zero. She got it, all right, wait, 2.2, let me catch up. Divided by the square root of 15 is what she did. And then I'm gonna show just in case how to do that, just to make sure everybody knows. But everybody make sure you get it right. You all have your calculators, I hope, because I expect you to be doing it with me, right? 
Um, so I decided to do it here because it all looks the same. So what do we say? 2.2 divided by, we're going to go second and then x squared to pull up the little square root symbol. And then if I need to go back, what is it? Uh, 15? Yeah. And you said what? 0 0.5680 block? 0 0.5680. Yes. So if I'm taking, yep, yeah, if I'm taking 4, which they're telling me to round to 4, 5680. Make sure everybody got that. So we're all on the same page. That's where I want to be right now. Okay, so that's what I input here. This is done. So far, so good. Part C, what is the distribution of this? Summation. Actually, you know what? Could you do a quick over review of that one again? I'm, a, I'm not, sorry, I'm a little slow on some of this stuff. You mean how you Read the second part that we just did. Yeah, on the um, yeah. So you see that um, we're doing this situation. So right. the mean is going to stay. We got to do sigma over the square root of n for the standard deviation of this distribution. So that's what I. That's the little calculation I did here. And then I know you have the app. So let me go to the app real quick. And we did. 2.2 divided by, and then the square root symbol is this one on top of x squared. So you have to press second, and then x squared to pull up the square root symbol, and then 15.5680. And that's the value that we're inputting for that standard deviation of that distribution. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so the third one. Part C, what is the distribution of this? All right, cool. Tell me which color I'm going to use. Pink, lime, green, or teal? Distribution of what? Teal. For this one, what is the distribution of this, this thing? Summation of X. That's what that symbol implies. Teal. I'm looking at this one. So, all right, um, let me use teal. Check this out. The mean is going to change. And the standard deviation is going to change for this distribution. So let's calculate this part first. I have to do n times mu. So I'm going to do it over here. Um, n times mu is, and my n was 15, and my mu was two, uh, 24. This is going to go, I'm sorry if I have these arrows here. And then <clears throat> let's go back to this. And my standard deviation is sigma times now the square root of n. Following the formula, I'm going to write this here, sigma times the square root of n, which is, uh, what was it, 2.2 times the square root of 15. And that's going to go in here, right? <clears throat> so I'm basically just following the formula. That's it. So here, my app. First one is n times mu, 15 times 24. This is going to be 360. 360, and I'll show my other screen again. And then I need sigma times the square root of n, so 2.2 times square root, second, and then this x squared to get square root. I was going to square root of 15. Now we're multiplying. So 8 point, let me write that, 8.52. 0, 0.6 when I'm rounding to four decimal places. Make sure you have that. <clears throat> Make sure you uh, you got that. All right. You good? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. That's what I input here. 8.5206 for my standard deviation was 364. Oops, let me write that here too. 360 So now I already did these calculations. So if either one of these distributions shows up in any one of these down here, then I'm gravy because I got this already. I'm good. Basically, that part is going to be the last part of what I input for normal CD or inverse norm. It just depends on which distribution I want. So you guys have to tell me now. You're going to tell me if I'm on pink, lime green, or teal. Pink, lime green, or teal. 
if one randomly selected runner is timed, just stop there. Am I on the pink distribution, the lime green distribution, or the teal? Pink. Pink. I'm on the distribution of X. There's no selection of more than one. It's one. Let me get my pink up. Okay, I'm selecting one. You see that? One. So when I'm selecting one, I'm here. One. I'm not talking about a sample. I'm not talking about averages. I'm not talking about sums. I'm talking about one. So I'm on the first distribution. So if I, you know, if I want to write that, I can write that on space. So I'm going to save space for other things. Okay, so now I know which distribution I'm on. Now I can continue. You guys good with that? Are we good so far? Okay, now, fine. The probability. Stop. What do I want? Do I want area? Do I know area? Which one? Normal CDF. Uh huh. I want area. I'm going to go normal CDF. Awesome. Um, I might have to do the drawings down here. <clears throat> so, if I draw the curve, which I like to get used to, <clears throat> the center of this curve, because I'm on this first distribution, is 24. Right? I don't want that to look like that was an accident. I don't want that to look like that. Okay. Um, now I want probability, or I want area between 23.648, which is like to the left of that here somewhere, 23.648, and then 24.14. I like when this happens, when they ask me for between, because that makes it even easier. Normal CDF. Okay. Um, talk to me. Normal CDF, you guys told me I need to use. Uh, what's my lower bound? 23.648. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely need to use this. Okay, let me write that down. And then what's my upper bound? 24148. Mm -hmm. 24.148. What's my mean? Mm, 24. 24. And my standard deviation? Two point two. I think mm -hmm. it's zero. You see that this is matching this because I'm on this distribution, right? The last two things that are input are always matching the, you know, the stuff for the distribution. Okay. All right. So I'll show both my calculators again, just in case this one <clears throat> follows more so the physical calculator, except I'm a little less fancy. Second bars. Normal CDF because I don't, well, I don't have to deal with, um, no, anyway, lower, you guys told me it was 23.648, upper was 24.148, my mean was 24, my standard deviation was 2.2. Paste, and technically when I paste this, it looks the same as what you guys do on the app. I'm going to do it on the app also. Just because I, I have that too. <clears throat> I love this app. Um, second bars, normal CDF because I want area. And I, this is just taking me longer because I'm doing it like three times. 23.648, comma, upper bound, 24.148, comma, my mean was 24, comma, my standard deviation was 2.2. And I should get the same thing. Point nine, uh, point zero nine. Let me break that down. Approximately zero point zero nine zero four. If I'm rounding to four decimal places. So I'm, I'm hoping again, you guys are going through it with me, right? So that's this probability. All right, let's talk about the next one. Tell me which, uh, which, uh, what do you call it? Which uh, distribution I'm on, okay? Pink, lime green, or teal. For the 15 runners, find the probability that their average time is between blah. Pink. Tell me, well, careful. 
<laughs> it's not pink. I'll tell you that. Oh, okay. Lime oh, green. Never mind. I know what I did. <laughs> Which one is it? Because Lime it was green. like 30, but I was thinking something else. Yes. Cool. Lime green. I'm selecting 15 now. Once I'm selecting more than one, I am no longer on the first one. I ignore the first one. This is only when I'm selecting one. But now that I'm selecting more than one, I have to think about whether it's average or sum. And they tell me average, and so I'm lime green, uh, lime green here. Okay, so 15 runners, I'm selecting a sample, find the probability that their average time is between. Now this part looks the same, right? I'm still finding probability, so I'm still finding area. Um, Technically, the picture doesn't vary much. It's just that one thing changes when I do normal CVF because I want area again. Um, what's my lower bound? 23.648. Yes. What's my upper bound? 24.148. Okay. What's my mean? 24. And my standard deviation? 0.568. Yes. Awesome. Cool. Does everybody see why and how and all the goods, right? So I'm on my lime green distribution because I'm selecting more than one again. I don't have to do, by the way, I don't have to do. Uh, okay, I don't have to do all this calculation again. I already did it for the problem. I don't have to worry about, you know, this part because I did it already. I did it up here. Now it's just a matter of which one. And then again, like I told you, the end of whatever the heck you're dealing with, in this case, normal CDF, is going to match the end or whatever here, the mean and standard deviation there. So I knew I was using normal CDF because why? You already have probability or area. I want probability. Or, right? yeah. I want it. So I use normal, C, uh, normal CDF. So let's go second bars, normal CDF. My lower bound you said was 23.648, comma, if you're using the app. My upper bound was 24.148, comma. My mean was 24. You guys told me my standard deviation was 0 0.58. It's 568. 568, <laughs> I was looking at it like something was wrong, okay. <laughs> five, six, eight, and then 0.33, let me write that, approximately 0 0.330, oh, I missed the five, three, three, five, one, if I'm rounding, right? Approximately 0.3351. Make sure you guys are good with that. Questions? Are we good? Okay. Yeah? Everybody got the same number. So good. We're working together. All right, back here. Zero point. Oh, let me just check. Fix my notes here. This was zero point five six eight. Okay. Okay, all right, cool. Let's look at part F. So this was green, and then this one was pink. This is for your notes if you need these later, if you look at them later. Okay, part F. This one was. Tell me if the distribution is pink, lime green, or teal. Find the probability that the randomly selected 15 person team will have a total time less than 366. Which distribution am I on? Teal. Yes. What, what gave it away? The total times, so it's a sum? Yes. First of all, I'm selecting 15, so I know I'm not on the first one. And I'm talking total. Total is a sum. And the third one represents a distribution of the sum. So I'm on this one. 
Now, I already did these calculations, so I don't have to worry about that, but now I know I'm on this distribution. I'm ignoring the others. And I'm finding probability again. I might draw this one. I'm finding probability again, which means that I want what? Do I know area? Do I want area? Do I know uh, normal CDF, inverse norm? Which one? The normal CDF? Yeah. Okay, so now if I'm drawing this curve, um, the center of this curve is the mean of that distribution, 360. And then, I don't know, where am I at? Total time is less than 366. So 366 is to the right of that. And this is why I like to draw the center. You can see the location of what they're asking for, right, based on that. And I want less than 366, so I want area to the left. And I want area, so again, I use normal CDF. Now, what's my left, my lower bound on, you know, this is just the center of the curve. This is not bounding the area, by the way. Notice that the area goes past that. So what's my lower bound for this particular area? So is that where you would use the infinity? Yeah, it's like a negative infinity or large negative number. You could do negative one E99. You can go negative like one with a bunch of zeros. What's my right or my upper bound? 366. 366. And then my mean? 360. Yeah. And then my standard deviation? 8.5206. Remember, the end of this should match the distribution that I'm on, right? So I'll show this. I guess I can do both calculators again if you guys want me to. <clears throat> so I'm going normal CDF. Here's the first one. Second bars, normal CDF. Lower bound, you guys told me, was negative 1 second E99. If you want a large negative number, my upper bound was 366. My mean was 360. My Ooh. Oops, I put that in the wrong place. Make sure you don't do that. <laughs> 366 is my upper. Okay, mean was 360. Okay, standard deviation was 8.5206. Okay, pace, right? 0.7593. Uh, I'll do it on the app too, just so you see. There's the app. Um, second bars again. <laughs> Normal CDF again. Do you see the repetition <laughs> going on here? Now she, in this case, um, you know, you could put a large negative number. Um, and then 366. Or if you like, you could put, depends on what you guys do. Also here, negative one second comma to get the E, 99, comma, upper bound, 366, comma, 360, comma, what was it, 8.5206. And then I got the same thing, right? Point, uh, point 0.7593 rounded to four digits, etc. 7593. So is everybody getting the same stuff? I got an error message, so I must be in putting something in wrong. OK, um, do not use this as negative. Use this as negative. I don't know if you're doing that. Okay. Do I that. think that's what I did, yeah. If you use the minus button or the subtraction button for negative, the calculator doesn't interpret that as negative. So if you use the subtraction button for negative, it's not going to work. If you use the negative button for subtraction, is not going to, like if I do two, negative six, oops, two, like this, Nick. Oh, see, it won't even do it on that. <laughs> that's, that's what I did. It's, it's, I got the right one now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's, that's what happens with um, the TI. The TI it does not interpret the minus or the subtraction as negative. And so it happens every semester. Um, somebody always does that. Because it's right there, you see it, you're like, boom, okay. But yeah, just be careful with that. And then we already did G, so there's only one more part here. 
gonna move this because I'm gonna need some space. I'll draw this last one. So I want you to tell me again, because every time we do these, you know, these um what do you call it? Any of these word problems, we have to now think about which distribution we're on. So am I on, you know, the pink one, which is you know, selecting one, the t the green one lime green, which is, you know, selecting more than one and talking about the distribution of the averages, or am I on the teal where I'm selecting more than one and I'm on, I'm talking about the sum, distribution of the sums. So down here, the top 20% of all 15 person team relay races will compete in the championship round. These are the 20% lowest time. <laughs> what is the longest total time that a relay team can have and still make it to the championship round? <laughs> I'm wondering if this is like a typo or something. The top 20% um, goes into the championship. So we're basically looking for, you know, what is separating the top 20% from the rest, right? What is the longest total time? And this is again a 15 team, a 15 person team. What is the longest total time that a relay team can have? Now, I just want to ask first, I just want to talk about which distribution I'm on. So just determine that for me. Which one am I on? Am I on the pink one, the, the lime green, or the teal? I think teal. Yeah. And what it makes you what makes you think teal? Because you're right. Because the the last question is the longest total time, so it's a sum. Yes. So we're still talking about a, uh, more than one, and we're talking about total, the longest total time. I, it sounds weird, but it's telling us which distribution we're on. Because of that, I'm on the distribution of the sums. So uh, I'm going to draw this one again, and I'm on that, la that last distribution of the sums. Summation X, I'm just going to put that for reference. The center of that is 360 because the mean of that is 360. All well, that is done here. Now, let me ask you this. I want to figure out <clears throat> what is separating the top 20% from everyone else. Those are the people that are going into the championship round. So does that mean that I know area or do I want area? It doesn't matter if you're guessing. Do I know area? Do I want area? I'm separating. I want to know who I separates you want the top. It. I think you want the area. Well, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm glad you're guessing. I'm glad you you tried. Remember, I'm top 20 percent. I'm given a percentage, right? Okay. So that means I know area because okay. they're telling me top 20 percent. Where's top 20 percent? Like up here somewhere? This area is 20%. So that means I know area. I know area because I know the percentage. They're telling me top 20%. And therefore, because I know the percentage, I know the area, and I know it's located to the right of something because of the fact that it's top 20%. Does that make sense? Yes. So that means that I'm using do I use normal city app or do you do I use inverse norm? Inverse norm. Because I know the area. I know I'm talking about top 20%. I know the area. So I'm gonna go inverse norm. I'm gonna write it over here. Okay. I'm um oh, look at that. I know the area to the right. Is this a situation where I do the one minus to find inverse norm? Yes. This is the situation where I do the one. And why? How do I know? Because you need to find the right and not the left. Yeah, because they give me the right and I need to input the left into my calculator, right? Or into, you know, because you guys, let's say you have the app. You don't have the option, you know, of whether to choose left, right or, or center. <laughs> so this is the one where I'm going to do one minus because I know area to the right and I want to input area to the left, right? This whole area to the left is one minus. 
to 0.2. My mean was 360. My standard deviation was 8.5206, right? Because the end of this is always matching whatever distribution I'm on. And I'll go to my app. My app, I can use my app, <clears throat> then second bars, inverse norm. The area that I input is always area to the left, so I'm doing one minus because I know area to the right here, 0.2, comma. My mean was 360, comma. My standard deviation was 8.5206. And I get for the top 20%, um, 367.17. Uh, so, um, Okay. Yeah. So 